Hey friends, and you must really be good friends if you've still stuck with me after all my neglect of this channel. Yeah, I'm I'm this deep in genetics and teaching and all that kind of stuff, so I haven't been paying as much attention as I should. Uh, but this video is a warning. Yeah, you see, I caught Matt Powell up to some some games. He's playing a familiar game. One you've probably seen many times before. Unable to address ideas from informed, educated people, he's going after naive targets who are unprepared for his lies. Like Ray Comfort or Steven Crowder, he goes looking for people who are uninformed about the subject he's discussing, discussing to bamboozle them with misleading comments, outrageous dishonesty, and misplaced confidence to make fools of the innocent. And he succeeds. He and a couple of other people from Dinosaur Adventureland uh, visited an Alabama city and prowled around making bogus statements to people who don't know any better, who willingly go along with it all. Worse, his lies about evolution have been addressed before, so he goes hunting for otherwise uninvolved people who are unfamiliar with the claims. It's sleazy and predatory. And now his victims are on record agreeing with some genuinely stupid stuff. So, let's take a look at Powell's arguments. Here's the first. Some people are claiming out there that dinosaurs gassed themselves into extinction. So they passed so much flatulence that it warmed the environment, and then they died from the global warming. Did dinosaurs fart themselves to death? He leads by saying that some people are claiming, but he doesn't say who. This is always a giveaway. He doesn't want to say anything can easily be tracked down and shown to be wrong. Unfortunately for Mr. Powell, this claim is easy to trace. It is a dishonest distortion of a paper by Wilkinson, Nisbet, and Ruxton titled Could Methane Produced by Sauropod Dinosaurs Have Helped Drive the Mesozoic Climate Warmth? Notice that it doesn't mention anything about extinction. Instead, it makes the unremarkable claim that methane production by Mesozoic sar sauropods could have made a contribution to greenhouse warming. That's it. Powell is relying on gross exaggeration of the facts in combination with the silly humor of dinosaurs being killed by farts. His victims think that's silly. I agree. I also think it's silly, but the only person saying silly things is Matt Powell. He does a similar thing with his next question, juxtaposing a silly word on top of a serious claim to make it seem non-serious. Yeah, you could, you could type in on Google right now, when monkeys surfed, and you'll find that monkeys made a voyage 34 million years ago from Africa to South America. Did monkeys surf to South America? Uh, this is another unexceptional claim. Monkeys evolved in Africa. How did monkeys get to South America? Even if you don't believe in evolution, they had to get there somehow, right? How did the monkeys get from Noah's Ark landing on Mount Ararat to the Amazon? They must have rafted, not surfed. And it's obvious even in the excerpt he quotes. A raft of monkeys found themselves adrift in the Atlantic. They'd been blown out to sea by an intense storm. There's nothing remarkable or miraculous about the claim at all, except that Powell emphasizes surfing, as if monkeys were hanging tin on a shiny fiberglass plank. He's prejudicially coloring the idea with irrelevant goofball interpretations. Of course the idea of surfing monkeys is nonsense. But that's not what anyone is proposing. Okay, for his next couple of questions, he takes a different approach. He goes fishing for fringe pseudoscience and then presents it as legitimate mainstream work. It's similar to extracting Powell's bizarre, hateful theology and declaring that all Christians want to execute gays. Some of the other ones that, that are now concluding is that millions of years ago, when they say when we were primates, that we were punched in the face so much that this is where our beards came from. That we evolved beards as a cushion. 
Did beards evolve from face punches? This is a good example of fringe science. A couple of scientists made an unlikely hypothesis that beards added protective padding to the, to the face and gave it a name. The pugilism hypothesis. Look it up. And then tested the physical properties of beards. It worked. If you've got, if you've got a lot of beard hair, it cushions against blows. Uh, unfortunately, they did no testing on whether it played a role in evolution or not, but claimed an evolutionary rationale for the sensation value. It's garbage. It's unlikely that beards were selected for a minor enhancement against an unlikely and relatively rare experience. Bad science exists, but its existence is not evidence that all of evolutionary biology is false. Speaking of bad science, Powell and his cronies had to dive deep into the dumpster for their next one. They say that uh, squids hitched a ride here on asteroids. And that's how they got to Earth. Did squid hitch a ride on asteroids? Oh, he has made this claim multiple times before. Anyway, this claim emerged out of a seriously wacky gang of pseudoscientists under the leadership of Chandra Wickramasinghe, a dingbat whose entire academic career has been about claiming that a li life arose in outer space and then was seeded on planet Earth. There is no evidence supporting the idea that squid are aliens, and plenty of evidence linking them to all other life on Earth. The Wickermassinger School of accepting any assertion that life came from space without evidence has also led to them claiming that Mars is covered with mushrooms and skulls. It gets published in tabloid rags like the Daily Mail. No one, other than a few loons, accepts any of it. By the way, Wickermassinger is a creationist who argues that there are levels of intelligence converging on a god who is responsible for creating all life. When Powell is mocking this idea, he's mocking a fellow creationist, even if he's not a Christian creationist. Just as Wickermassinger accepts any bit of nonsense that supports his bogus claims, so too does Powell, relying on instilling a feel of incredulity in his audience. So he's back to his pedestrian evolutionary claims, slanted with some absurd sensationalist twist. T-Rexes evolved into today's chickens through variations and mutations. That's why we have chickens. What do you guys think of that? Did T-Rex evolve into chickens? No. Birds are dinosaurs. They evolved from Mesozoic dinosaurs, but not T-Rex. Look, this, this whole approach that Powell is taking is repulsive. It is not a valid critique of an idea to round up an assortment of uninformed people and hit, then hit them with a request to validate your disagreement. It's even worse when you couch your disagreement fallaciously with distorted interpretations of the proponent's claims. It is gross. It is dishonest. It doesn't matter what you're trying to argue. You are poisoning the discourse. And I'm not simply criticizing young Earth creationism here. I felt exactly the same way about Bill Maher's movie, Religulous, in which he confronted unprepared Christians at truck stops and then mocked them for not knowing how to respond, or responding poorly. Bush bushwhacking people with glib nonsense is just plain ugly. Asking people to take a stand on something based on your lies is even uglier. So these guys, they're just a trio of bumbling bumpkins stumbling about Mobile, Alabama, giving pop quizzes to uninformed people who know nothing about the subject, judging them with their own incorrect answers, and then chortling about how stupid scientists are when they never bothered to talk to a single scientist. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. If you are confronted by some bozo who sticks a camera and a microphone in your face and demands your opinion on a subject you've never studied before, just walk away. Don't let the creepy person make a fool of you and parade your face on YouTube. Okay, that's, that's for old fools like me to parade our faces on YouTube. 
Uh, well, thanks for listening. I, I hope this wasn't too, uh, too excessive of a video. I'm going to get back to grading papers, grading exams, all this kind of stuff. Uh, but thank you for sticking by. I'm hoping this summer I'll have a little more free time. Uh, I will not just show videos of spiders. Don't worry. We'll have some other stuff to talk about. Uh, but that's got to wait for the end of the semester, which is about a month away. I might occasionally throw in something like this. And also just to uh, parade the fact that I have sponsors, people on Patreon who are supporting me in this, which you can do as well. Just go to patreon.com slash pzmyers, that's spelled P-Z-M-Y-E-R-S. And uh, yeah, you can sign up. It's only a dollar a month. That's, that's all. I even have an option there where you can say you're going to be a Patreon patron, but you don't want to see any spiders. And then I won't show you any spiders. See how nice I am? I'm very generous that way. Okay, well, I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for listening. I'll try to be a little better in the future about actually making more videos. I don't mind. It's fun. Okay. Talk to y'all later. Thanks for stopping by.